Hello, everybody. Cooling them. Holy shit, look at that light go back. We got a new winner. What's my number? He's never ready to go home. It seems like it is heavier when it's hot. Boom! All right, guys, Anthony here, Super Service. Oh, I can smell that exhaust. There's a lot of things going on with this truck. Here, froze up. We are taking off the Bulletproof Diesel oil cooler kit. I ran the dual filter kit on my truck and I really didn't see any benefit. I mean, it's just as easy just to change the freaking oil. Huh, I wonder why the hell we got fender wells. A little animals having lunch break in the engine bay. Spring pockets are a little rusted. The exhaust looks pretty freaking good. Cab mounts. Bye-bye. Those are shot. AC was freaking low. I just kind of assumed that you wanted a new emblem. Your ICP grommet is torn. Why do 7.3 turbos last longer than 6 liter turbos? Because they don't make no power. You want to make 400 horsepower with a 7.3, it won't last very long either. You should hurry up. I got all kinds of shit for you to do over here. Letting it drain. These are still all original. 7.3 fan clutch, bulletproof diesel fickum, bulletproof diesel coolant pump. We took the exhaust off. Julie sold another stud job today. Woohoo! Booking to June, maybe July. I don't know. I got a list. There were some little chewed up spots on your low pressure oil pump. Could have been one of these little zip ties right there. First thing we power washed and painted so we could hang up the lights. Hi, Rooster Cat. Hi, guys. <laughs> Ready? Let's go look. It's beef jerky. It's a shop towel. Oh, it is a shop towel. It'll be right there for you, Jason. Base engine doesn't look bad. When it's actually chucked up in the honer, we'll see what it does. We're gonna be surfacing the exhaust manifold side of it. There you go, short block. Here's a funny story about my great great aunt. She was a hundred, served in the army, the widow for 60 years. When you're done and everybody gets up and you're leaving to go to the cemetery, she was a huge baseball fan and she requested Take Me Out to the Ball Game be the last song played at her funeral. Nicole, she was a big Kansas City Royals fan, went to her last Royals game when she was 97 years old. What are we doing here? That can't stay there. I was putting it They're getting yelled at. Uh, clear a spot on the table. Back and forth. It's not hard. The first 20 minutes he's driving the new truck, the check engine light comes on. Maybe I shouldn't let him drive it. I really do try and call everybody back. It's um Hurry back. Thank you guys. <laughs> I like to think that we're we're worth waiting for. It's out there running. Your truck? We're gonna kill that charge. So when you get in here, turn that ultrasonic on, agitate it a couple times. Turn on the big spray cabinet. Take the transmission lines off, take the bracket off, all the shocks mm -hmm. off, pull the drive shafts out, pull the fuel pump out. What are you going to Just leave them all in here. Let them go as long as they can. I'll put them in the ultrasonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, close the door and kill the pilot. I'll see you tomorrow. All right. Bag them. Index card. Put them in a box and we'll put them over here. I don't know what we're doing with them yet. 6 4 Dooley on a tow truck showing up. Yeah. yeah. Truck showing up all hours of the night. I probably need to take the four wheeler out and move this truck around, figure out where we're going to put it. Very, very efficient at pushing trucks. We got a push bar hitch in it. Within the first 26 miles of me driving this 6.7, check engine light came on for two completely separate issues. Buy a 6.7, they said. It'll be great. How you doing? Is that yours? Caliper locked up. Oh, shit. Who told you in? I mean, it went right through the damn thing. Man, my bench is a mess. It won't was dead. Brand new O'Reilly's alternator is pushing 10 volts. You want to jump it with your truck since it's already running? No? Or you want to just leave it? Let the trash drive through the yard again? Then they have to try and get they're obviously not smart enough to get the car to drive through this. Yeah, that's what I'm worried about. They got a jump start truck. Jump starting freaking trucks. Back in the gravel, let the tow truck run over a couple times. What? Thank you. 
This is the Kentucky Good Park. Everybody else has to park wherever the hell they want. This Darian just assumed the good parking spot. Now we gotta park like back on the back 40. Then you go back here and move these around. We're about done for the night. Hey, well we got an intake here. Really, is that where we're leaving this intake? What's that? Oh, I, what is this for? It's all black and gunky on the inside, but I don't know what it's for. That? I don't Probably know. the one he just took off that truck, isn't it? No, because the has it back on. It was one of the... No. Oh, that has our intake on it. Yeah. 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 You have the or not. Um, you take that, that secondary tube off, don't you? Yeah, all that, that shit. secondary tube and the nipples? Mm -hmm. Yeah, all that shit. Darian! He should already had it all. Hang it. Dayton's leaving. A little other set of heads. Soaking the ultrasonic overnight. Alright, Jason, here's your intake. A lot of the paint came off. Every little bit of nasty soot I get out of here is that little bit. The ultrasonic is a lot. The ultrasonic will probably take almost all the paint. Put it in and see what happens. You can tell it's really ready because the ultrasonic gets loud. That's when you know that the ultrasonics are going through the water rather than getting cushioned by the uh, for air. Or You'll freak the hell out if it comes out completely shiny chrome now, huh? I'm gonna put those heads in on top. Even on, it turned off. Time ain't that. Up. I gotta set on a timer so it turns off. I guess it's late. What's up? <laughs> It's got alligator skin interior. See something you can't unsee. <laughs> Look, my flatbed fifth wheel hitch fits inside of the gooseneck trough. I mean, when we're here working, the shop kind of owns us, but when it's time to leave, we have one 17 year old. Julie's a stepmom. He's 17. Tanner actually works back there in the shop. He runs machine shop. He pretty much runs it. He's, I don't know how many sets of heads he's done, but it's been a lot. It's almost 10 o'clock. I mean, we're not even close. Not even at all. All right, guys, Anthony, your super service. They're fighting. This block is phenomenal. There is no shading on the top of the cylinder. I have a truck on the lot right now that would love to buy this from you. We've got lots of blocks back there. We could sell this to somebody on the lot right now. Before I go pulling these pistons out and disassembling this engine, what it is, make sure that uh, you don't want to sell this short block. Because I absolutely could grab another block, cut a 10 over. If they have any kind of connecting rod failure or bearing failure, I throw the blocks away. I noticed you had no filter. I mean, I'm kind of on the fence about, I'm assuming that you've got an 08 pan on it with a full flow filter. I mean, in my mind, let's leave the filter in it because the more filtering, the better. It's just a bypass. It's not like it will restrict the flow. Plumbed in factory filter. It's got its own spot. Everything is not in anything's way. If it was my truck, I would put the filter back in, pull the torque converter out. So I got the little back tool, half a cup of uh, training fluid out of the torque converter about every 20 minutes. Sauce all the way off. Well, Tanner actually did that. Throw some lifters in it. Boom. If we wasn't doing a cam and a balanced rotating assembly, I mean, this absolutely would be a pretty good candidate. This crank shaft will not go back in this camshaft will not go back in the connecting rods will not go back in not much happened with the short block last night because as we get some parts off let's go through and clean those parts so i'm not absolutely buried in dirty parts julie was planning on doing paint to match on this went ahead and polished it that's just straight up polished stuff looks freaking amazing got an engine i got a bore back in the back just a cash and carry the rear cover clean the upper oil pan the oil pan get all that stuff going it takes a little while to get all that looking brand new i'm not tearing apart on the engine i am back there working all right guys anthony and super reserves yeah don't laugh at that that's our loaner it's a short bed it actually matches but I wanted a place to put this camper shell at. I'm sure there are a lot of you guys that have bed bolts that are line X over. Take a hole saw with no pilot in it. Chances are we're going to be replacing the bed bolts. When we take the bolts out, the washer will come out and the line X will stay attached. And the washer will go over the line X and it'll be all like it, like nothing ever happened. Here, let's do another one. No pilot in the hole saw. Get one that just barely fits over the bolts and it'll center itself. Now we're just going to hope that we can get the bolts off. The hole is smaller than the washer. Something like that. Yeah, it kind of sucks to cut a hole in the line X, but I mean, it's the bolts. I mean, hell. 
stuff like that. I like it. I'm using this stubby so it doesn't break. That's unheard of. I've had to cut these things off before. I just got this one broke loose. I broke it loose with that. Look at that. Boom. I think that'll work pretty good. I think you can buy them all for like 60 or 70 bucks now, but they used to be like 400. I don't quote me on that. I don't know crap about prices. They're all out. Sometimes we have to cut the head of the bolt off. All right, guys, Anthony Air Super Service. Here we go. I haven't got that cleaned up all the way. Jason just left not very long ago. We got the whole frame painted all the way back. I went ahead and uh, redid the drive shaft. New carrier bearing, Spicer U joint. New bump stops to go in down there. Pulled the bed, the whole back's painted under the bed. Jason actually did a whole bunch of this. He just left on Friday. Got all new cab mounts on it. Here we go though. I actually screwed up. Powers that be said that we did not need to short block this at 1030 at night. Got the block machined and final clean it's ready but i did screw up the cam dowel whatever i'm freaking human right in there it's all perfect now joe down the street chuck this thing up in the mill got a new pin had to set it about 150,000 protrusion outside of the camshaft stage two cam balanced rotating assembly all the rods are weight matched New rods, new pistons, but right now I'm getting ready to put cam bearings in it and then blow it off one more time and then put oil galleys in and piston cooling jets, camshaft, crankshaft, bed plate, just time to go. We did put breeze plugs, whatever the hell you want to call them. Real wide ones, they have a name on them and they suck. It's just some of his plugs were, were showing a little signs of rust on the outer perimeter. So there you go. And I know a lot of you guys be on here, well, we replace them all the time. Well, there's a point. I mean, it depends on how they look because the factory seal is, well, I don't know, but I've had issues before. I had to raise a cab one time because the plug was leaking. It made me freaking puke all over the floor. His ported intake with our manifold on it. There's still a whole bunch of parts to clean. There's still a whole bunch of stuff to do. Transmission is shining. We did dark blue on the block. He's all surfaced balance rotating you know all that stuff's done basically ready for assembly but while i'm back there finishing the heads up clean that transmission line up it still looked all right though basically all mounted up my magnets freaking screwed up right there piston protrusion four thousands cam in play three thousands crank in play we got about maybe six thousands cam gear backlash which uh and here's the cylinders of the piston protrusion 32 33 30 and a half, 30, 32. All good. That's a uh, absolute benefit to not chopping the hell out of the block. This one's getting ready to go together, you know? We'll chop the hell out of them if we try to go absolutely clean. Good. I'm getting busy. Good. Twenty-six. You run the risk of scratching it. Twenty-six. Fuel pump needs to be assembled. Rockers need to be cleaned. He's got BD diesel exhaust manifolds. We're gonna check out the surface on them. We're gonna be dealing with exhaust later. That's gonna be fun. We got that ported intake. We're gonna be dealing with also these intakes with those plugs in it. They don't have thoughts for the engine harness for the retainers for that six hundred dollar engine harness. Cut off some intake studs and weld them to the tops of the plugs. Get everything done in the third bay so I can just be out here working. It always happens when it's time to put stuff together. You know, there's always a bolt that didn't get cleaned or a set of bolts that didn't get cleaned or something. We do it to the oil pan also. The valve covers are ready to paint. I actually clean the mating surface and then repaint it and then let it sit for days. If we do paint them, they go back black. In my opinion, it looks too out of place. We sell a lot of these Y pipes, we make them out of OEM flanges and we weld them on an engine block. We don't want to scratch these brand new manifolds. See that mating surface right here between the two? The cast meeting on the flange. That's how we would expect stuff to fit. It's a bonus to using an actual engine. That's our Y pipe. We do our up pipes too. Pretty freaking close. We went ahead and put Murray fan clutch, put a coolant pump in it. Got the driven diesel hose. We're gonna do the Edge CTS2 with fuel pressure and exhaust gas out of the BD manifolds. Our intake, but it's not ours. I don't know if I'm gonna be worried about it or not. When they welded this, this whole intake flexed. It's warped pretty freaking bad. I mean, we got it sucked down, but I tightened our manifold on there. It made some noises. Let's just hope that we didn't, we'll see, because you could absolutely tell. I mean, I. 
I would assume that that is why they quit cutting and porting them out and they went to casting them. Doing that much welding on there, warped the heck out of it. KC Turbo, Colt cams, new engine harness. There you go, Bob, belt's on right. This is an 03 housing, so you got to use your pedestal. Just about ready to drop the cab, clean all these up. The ICP sensor takes about 45 seconds to change. Yours is still brand new in the package. They don't fail as much as the 03s, but they do fail. We cleaned all the burrs up out of it. We did make this one piece. The welds could absolutely be a lot better. I kind of suggested the silver line. Now I kind of feel bad. It seems like everything is good on the fitment. We might put band clamps on it so we can adjust it and then, you know, it can always be welded. That is behind the firewall. You're not touching that. So I wanted that one piece all sealed up. I didn't want no clamp on it. I wanted to clear transmission dipstick, transmission lines and the frame and the transmission cross member. And right now we put that on, it will clear it. I should have went ahead and bolted it on before I started this video. Fuel pumps all taken apart. We got all, all the attachments for the transmission harness and the chassis harness all cleaned up and put back together. This is the driven diesel hose. Uh, you did have brand new hoses and I was really, really leery. That is what was on the truck when it showed up here. I'm gonna be real sad if it has a little weep or something. Generally, when they come into this bay, a, a radiator hose is a one-time only use. If you take it off, put another new one on. I'm gonna go ahead and gamble at the risk that I'm gonna be climbing down in there and uh, replacing this rat hose if it does drip. But uh, it'll probably be fine because it is ridiculously new. We got the cap on the oil temp sensor and then on the dipstick. New Ford 6.4 starter. Got a new adapter flange for on top of the oil cooler. Jason has got so many parts. He's got two solid turbo feed tubes. Blue Loctite, these bolts. A little bit of sealant right there. Go to take your oil fill cap off, pull things, pins with it. I seal it all up because it also is a weak point. 10 over, balanced rotating assembly, total engine rebuild, Colt stage two cam. Got a full set of Ford remands. Fickham harness was brand new. None of the tabs were broke. Clicked in on the back of the Fickham. Probably a reman, who knows. Ford, we get a job of this extreme, this much. It's hard to remember everything we do. Paint your front drive shaft. Jason run the camera when we first fired up. Flying from Washington, DC. And Jason, I hadn't even mentioned it to you yet. I mean, I don't know who all's coming with you here. My son is marching in the Cherry Blossom Parade this weekend. A fly back or rent a car back or maybe uh, ride on the bus with the band. If you got room, we might fill your truck up with people and drive out to, I'll just ride with it and make sure it's all good. My last video before the cab goes down. From the turbo down to here, it's gotta be done. Fuel's all primed, ready to go. Put the exhaust on, put the fan on, fan stator, lock tight the bolts. I still got a little list of stuff. Because once you put the fan on, it covers everything. I mean, those of you that watch us, all of our jobs look like this. They all do. I mean, take a little extra time. Let's make it nice. Act like we give a ding. All right, guys, Anthony here, Super Service. Jason's here. He's here, just flew in this morning. I wanted him to see the truck before the cab went down. We got the exhaust all done. Man, look at that. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Those are good clamps. Anybody that says those aren't good clamps, I mean, they're just freaking idiots. Move the hangers, not an attachment slash hanger combination, just a hanger. Silver line exhaust. I mean, is it perfect? Not really. Is it better than most? Uh, I wouldn't doubt it. See that hanger? I had to cut this off. They had this a little long. Then over here, we did have to use the U-bolt for this connection because they actually got this one right on it. So this one is right where it needs to be. I did make a little, I got an extension plate. I mean, it's right where it needs to be. The cheesy freaking clamp, the way that they was just stupid. Get the tip welded on. It's a little off and crooked. Pretty good space away from the tire. Bump stops are in. We put new bump stops in the front too. How you doing? We got new bump stops in the front. Jason said he don't want to drop the cab. He wants to just drive it home. Just somehow drive it home without dropping the cab. Drop it down and let's put some heat in it. Let's let her eat. One thing I don't know, how well it clears the pinch weld. If it don't, she might get a little massaging until she feels better. <laughs> Gotta tighten the bed down. What's up, guys? I'm in the bumper. From Russia. Yo, we gotta line the bed up. Here, I'll set you right here and you guys tell me when it's straight. Cabs are wider than the beds. They're lining up the bed and then we stopped to put the bumper on. Bed bolt's getting tightened, so that's a good sign. No more trees? That's the new customer loaner right there. <laughs> and a parking lot full of truck. We were just gonna do to here where the sidewalk ended, but we went all the way over to the back half. Here's Anthony and Jason put this bumper on. The bulletproof 
oil cooler kit did away with the bracket on the passenger side. Same threads, but she's looking for washers right now. Got an impact with an 18. 18 deep well is missing. Deep well? I know, it's missing. You'll have to go see if it's in Darien's. Look over there. He might have tools out taking that one apart. I haven't missed anything yet, guys. After the bumper goes on, Bit. we'll be ready. Here, pick up on this, Jim. 6.0, 6.4s, and 6.7s. That's what we do. We've known a lot of people affected by all the blizzards and floods and everything else up there. People have lost everything. Makes me thankful for what we have. Oh, yeah. Whoa. Could not handle snow until June. Better be some good fishing if it's snowing in June. Yeah, Don't get to see Dayton very often. He's still in high school and he works here part time at night. This probably past his curfew, but I think he's hanging out. Ten. Thirteen. What? Jason's sixteen hours away. We're just right down the street. Everything just right down the street. Go out there, make right. Drive to see water. I-70 goes to Baltimore, right? Where's the beginning? The fire is dead. I was just trying to find him, but I ain't that good yet.
you've lost your intake. That's a gambling loss right there. I, heard, I thought I heard. Never had to break. Well, it's not good, guys. It's bad. That sucks. Intake's got to come off, guys. When I was tightening it down, it's that old dog welded. He called us and told us to come over there because it was warped. And I thought I heard a crack. I heard it. It was like creaking. There was noises coming from over here, and there was noises from over here. And it was like, I didn't go to Bay City back when I leave. Get the oil primed up. To wash it off. We got to go. It's leaking. We welded it, and uh, our welder told us when he welded this, actually, Jason was here, right? He was here, and we went over there to it, and no, it's a ported intake. You guys remember, it's ported. They cut the top off and welded it, welded it shut, but it was tweaked. All right, it's got real long. Oh, well, we need to take that off. I think the welds broke. We gambled. It ain't the end of the damn world. And let's go out here and see if we can throw a rod out the side of it. Then we'll really have a damn problem. Let's go. They didn't even step on the brakes. They came up good. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't even touch them until just now. Transmission fluid, guys. We're going through the gears and make sure transmission's full. Yeah, look at that. Come on. Do you want to leave? I pulled the torque converter.
I'm gonna shut it off, check the oil one more time. We don't have any fluid. Go. Put the dipstick. All right, here we go. We haven't driven anything out since we did this. It's concrete. Yeah. Hey, yeah, look at that. No one and no power steering. None. Silent. Do a 14 point turn to get out of here. Now it'd be normal to have a little, uh, going over this curve. To have a little power steering noise. That was weird. Something about whatever it bounces. <laughs> Maybe that battery goals are a little low. Thirteen point two. Yeah. Under uh
freshly assembled smell. <laughs> we didn't wash it off, so you know, paint baking on. about this spot right here like this spot <laughs> makes power steering make noises <laughs> see <laughs> didn't make a single noise the whole time we was driving nope until we get right freaking here Look, I messed it up, guys. The freaking line, I was threading it on there, and right just now, right when I opened the hood, and it just, pshhh, that sucked. It wasn't on all the way. See, I had the coolant bottle full, and there's the pressure. The temperature is a couple degrees higher. I mean, we was running about 196 to 198. Let's fire it up real quick, make sure we don't have leaking you know look in there we have pressure there's a drop still down on it yep that little bastard's still leaking hey well hook it up here all right guys anthony of Super service all right this is jason's truck i had 15 miles on it and then we uh, had to change the intake so i got about 320 miles on it right now But we got a problem. Big, big issue. Cab off. Engine out. Issue. It's my freaking fault. Put the wrong size freeze plugs in it. Calls for inch and a half. Ordered the got them. Put them in. The ones I got, they only have two thousandths interference fit. You little bastard.
I guess come to find out the ones that I normally put in, they should have about nine thousandths interference. Uh, freeze plug is one inch, 509 thousandths OD. So since the freeze plug issue, Jason had an idea. He ordered the EGR provision O-Dog intake. Let Jay look at it and see if he thinks it'll weld good. Once we tell your welding rod to that intake, it's our baby. Honestly, the casting looks pretty good. I mean, we probably will be able to weld to it. But the IPR casting also looked pretty good. Those of you that remember back years ago when I was desperate and I was welding IPR deletes onto intakes, the IPR casting would explode while you're welding it because of imperfections inside of the cast material. I actually told Vince then, I'll keep buying them and cutting them off and welding them on. But the casting material was so horrible, I couldn't do it. Got our concrete all done. Cab off, engine out, change them all. Okay, whatever, nothing under there now. Uh, we've got the SRL Plus tune on this, and it actually doesn't smoke almost none at all. That's stage 2 Colt Cam, Stage 2 KC Turbo, and stock fuel. That Stage 2 Turbo it takes a little bit to light it up. Gotta take the cab back off, take the engine out. Right now, we're kind of just driving it and deciding how many upgrades we want to do, because if we go too freaking far with this son of a gun, I'm telling you what, we're going to have to yank the heads off and O-ring. Oh, we're pushing race stuff, and it'll hit 100 miles an hour again fast slightly more than stock turbo lag even so much as five pounds of boost built up forget about it it's freaking gone it'll hit 30 pounds in a second boom you're gone you're at freaking 100 miles an hour fast enough that i gotta let off the pedal because there's always somebody i'm really wanting to get 500 miles on the truck before i take the cab off but i don't know that we're gonna wait that long i got 300 and some odd miles on it right now I'll take the cab off do a good nice little inspection make sure everything's all good i am gonna have to take the rear cover off which is a drag for the t-joint on the back slide hammer and get the rear main seal out thought i'd fess up and make a video there was one perfect person and we crucified him uh, hopefully i'm allowed to mess up say on the mess ups i try to show them you know anybody can just show uh, good stuff if anybody can do that i put the wrong ones in it i mean they're inch and a half and they went in but in hindsight i'm hand was the interference a little loose i could beat my head against the wall i got some extra ones and measured them and they're 14 thousandths on the open end but they were only two and three thousand bigger that ain't gonna work grab the wrong ones put them in it can always be worse jason should have this truck to be in washington right now take the cab off no use in fighting around it trying to mess with it just get it out of the way get the cab off so we can do a quality repair again because yeah we're not even done deciding what we're gonna do either so thought I just had to make this video that way all the internet ninjas can get on here and talk about how much smarter they are than everybody else in the world especially me i should have mic'd them i don't put plugs in all of them they look good and there's no rust on them and they look perfect i don't touch them as of right now i have now pouted about taking this cab off and fixing these freeze plugs longer than it's going to take to fix it all right guys life sucks Jason's truck. Yep. I'm a, what I tell normally tell people is uh, take this out in the backyard and beat shit out of yourself with it. I got the plugs in. Went ahead and did them all. The brass, that's fluid weld. Before you know about this stuff. But now I'm freaking waiting on the rear cover gasket. Got 9,000 interference fit just bang my head against the freaking wall we got uh yeah that's the old intake we got the other intake too this is how far we had to go down this all of this has 500 miles on it cab off engine out over some two dollar plugs slide hammered out the yeah whatever Slide hammer it, it always breaks through. And there you go. Nothing like tearing stuff apart. Once you get it moving though, it comes out easy. Drill holes in it, put a little pin in it, pull it out. Whatever, we destroyed it. Cleaned up the crank flange. Here's the cam that the uh, pin looked like it stayed put just fine. It's had 500 miles put on it. How very often do we get to, you can look at the shoulder. This is the cam, this is the gear, that little lip right there. We want that reveal to be the same. And it is, it's all good. Better replace that pin. Everything looks like it's all right.
not very often that I get to take 500 miles and take it back to work. Not very often. I'm still happy with the manifolds. Look, it really came off right here. I'm still pouting. I'll still be pouting after this truck gone and done. We did move the shell back because it's kind of a pain in the freaking butt to get everything all lined up. So we just unbolted it and moved it back. We got all kinds of parts in here. I want to consolidate before we took it out. Dust ourselves off, get back to work. And what can we do? Put the wrong damn plugs in. But at least you get to see everything from a different angle, I guess. We got all new wiring, all new everything. It's Jay did say he could weld it on there. We wanted to go ahead and change it on that O-Dog intake. You know what little bit of lag we've got because of the big turbo will probably get worse with a bigger intake. It runs good right now. Jason's got new tires in his garage, so he'll be using them. <laughs> if you're in the pedal real hard, it will soot. It, it will blow out some black smoke. That right there would say we've got enough fuel. At the end of the day, we do only have four bolts per cylinder. I think after about two weeks of driving this, if we was to go big injectors, the first time you go to take off in the rain on a slight hill, it's just going to break the tires loose. It'll be fun as a mother for a little bit, then it'll just get annoying. I hate to think that you'll wind up turning it down. It's hard to get traction, mainly in the rain. It's going to be almost just ridiculous. You'll, you'll try to get out in traffic. It'll be way worse than having turbo lag because you'll be freaking hitting the pedal and the tires are just spinning and you're trying to move and you can't freaking go. We just have to figure out which way we want to go. That's what I'm getting at. We get too far into performance, then we lose reliability. And I really don't like not having reliability. All right, guys, we're here. Washington, I went ahead and drove the truck out here. Yeah, it's Easter. He driving his truck, about damn time. Got the SRL Plus tune with uh, Stage 2 Colt Cam, KC Stage 2 Turbo, fresh set of injectors, engine harness, silver line 4 inch. It's, it's, uh, it, it runs. That Gearhead SRL Plus transmission tuning, it shifts like a, it's, it's different. It definitely takes some getting used to. <laughs> The, the, the only thing that sucks is that, just like Jason just said, there will be a time when he gets used to it. And that's just going to be sad. It's like, damn. Damn, I thought it used to be. grabs that? That's isn't it? <laughs> uh, we went ahead and got the freeze plugs. Dumbass dude grabbed the wrong ones and put them in. And, but we got it done. Uh, just drove it. It's got... Uh, 1600 miles, 500 plus that. So it's got about 1600 miles on it right now. It's got his freaking truck back finally. Now.
rent up a check, I might do it again. Enemies close, have me thinking they're friends. Ten toes down, I'll be free until the end. Crib outside the city, I don't feel safe in my ass. Took so many years, I'm just waiting for the wins. I'm in debt to no one but the one who took my sins. I do it for real, there's no reason to pretend. If I do it once, I do it again. Add it up, add it up, bank roll, bank roll, euro, euro. Pray up, get money, then we lay low 